Hi and welcome to the Windows Kernel Programming Fundamentals course here on Pentester Academy. My name is Pavel and I'll be your guide throughout this course. Here you can see some of the important members of an IRP. Most of these are documented in the Windows Driver Kit and we will use some of them throughout the course. So the only one I want to highlight at this point is called the IO status. And so the IO status is of type IO status block which points to two members. One of them is called status and this is the final status of an IRP. And so once I set the status and complete the IRP, this is the status is going to be reported to the original client. And so we'll see how to do that uh, in a moment. The information member is a polymorphic value that means its meaning depends on the type of request. So for example, for a read or write request, the information member should be set to the number of bytes that have been used in the read or write request. In fact, this is the value that is returned in the read file or write file uh, functions called, for example, from user mode. The IOStack location looks something like this. It has a major function, which is the actual type of operation. Maybe read, maybe write, maybe create. These are the IRP MJ constants that we've seen already briefly. And then there's a minor function, which is only relevant for certain types of operations, mostly plug and play and power. So for the purposes of this course, we're not going to actually need that member. And the most important piece in an IOStack location is this parameter union. This is a monstrance union which holds several structures. Each structure contains information that is relevant for one type of request. So for example, if my request is read, then I need to go to the parameters and read member to see all the information that I need for that read operation, such as the size of the buffer provided by the client. And so to gain access to the IOStack location onto itself, you need to call a function called IOGetCurrentIRPStackLocation, which actually just takes an IRP pointer and gives you the pointer to the IOStack location, which is relevant to your level in the device stack in case there are more than there is more than one device in that uh, device stack. And so we'll see how to use some of these structures, of course, later on in the driver we're currently writing, which is the, the process power driver. So once we have an IRP and we deal with the request, at some point we have to complete the request. Without completing the request, the IRP is going to hang around and that means the request will never be completed and the client that is waiting perhaps for this to happen is going to be waiting indefinitely. So the way to complete a request is by calling the IOComplete-Request function which requires us to set up the status first and the information if relevant and then call the IOComplete-Request function. Calling IOComplete-Request just says to the IO manager, hey, the IRP is complete, please return whatever information is needed to the client. And so completing can be because of some error, for instance. Maybe the client provided uh, illegal buffer size or an unknown control code or whatever. Or it could be because of a successful completion of some request. So let's see how would that work in our driver. So currently, let me go back to our source code. Here's what we have here. We have a driver that knows to, how to load. It creates a device object and a symbolic link. However, at this point, we can't really open a handle to the file, and that's because we're not supporting the IRP MJ create uh, request. So let's go ahead and do that by completing the request. And so I'm going to support create and close, and I'm going to point them to the same exact function. And the reason I'm doing that is because for create and close, in most cases, all I want to do really is just say that I agree. And so all dispatch routines accept a device object, which I don't care about in this case, because I know which device it is. And in fact, I have nothing to gain by getting this device object pointer here, but it is just part of the way uh, dispatch routines uh, work. And then I'm getting the IRP here. This is the request 
created by, a, by the ION manager to represent this particular create or close request. And so in this case, all I want to do really is just say, I agree, it's fine by me, so that create file could work and close handle could work successfully as well. So the way to do that is to go to the IRP, to the IO status member, and fill out the status that I want to return to the client, which in this case is a successful status. And for create and close, there's really no special information I need to return, so I'm going to fill that polymorphic value with zero. And then I'm going to call the IO complete request function. And the iComplete request function, which is in fact a macro that's calling an internal function, and so it requests uh, two parameters. The first one is the IRP to complete. And the second one is a priority boost that I can provide to the original client that handed me this request. So this is mostly useful for cases when you have um, when you have operations that are completed asynchronously and the client thread may have been waiting for a while and so you want to give him some boost. And so for the purpose of this course, we're going to complete all operations within the handler itself, so without any asynchrony uh, anywhere. So it's just perfectly fine to go ahead and provide zero here, indicating that we're not providing any special boost to the thread because it really wasn't waiting at all. It's just executing this particular code right now. And then I'm going to return the same status that I uh, put inside the IRP. This is in fact mandatory and if you don't do that then the behavior is undefined so you don't know exactly how that's going to play out so it's better to, uh, to be consistent. So you may be tempted to do something like this. Just say well if I don't want to get confused then I should probably do something like this, and so I'm getting the correct status with whatever value I put inside the IRP. This may look like a good idea, but in fact it isn't. And the problem here is that the IRP, after calling IOComplete request, should be considered as gone, as destroyed. And so that pointer is really poison, you should never touch that pointer after you call IOComplete request, and this in fact will cause blue screen in most cases. And so what you really want to do is just go ahead and return a value which doesn't depend on the contents of the IRP. So let me build that to make sure it works, uh, compiles correctly. And so it looks fine. So now I want to test this out. So it's about time for us to actually create a client for our driver. So I'm going to go to the solution and add a new project. And that project is going to be a standard console uh, application. For our purposes, it's going to be good enough. Here's a console application. Let's uh, call that uh, just a test as a simple uh, name. So the purpose of this application will be to test the functionality of the driver. So for now, we still don't have the final functionality that will allow us to open a handle with super powerful privileges to any process that we want, but at least at this point we should be able to test the fact that we can open a handle to our device. Let me just uh, remove all this uh, boilerplate uninteresting code. I'm going to include uh, two headers. That's windows.h for all the Windows APIs and I'm going to use stdio for printf related functionality. And so the first thing I need to do is open a handle to the device. This is exactly what I'm trying to prove that can, can actually do. And so remember that to call the create file function properly, I need to provide the symbolic link, which is these uh, two backslashes, a period, a backslash, and the symbolic link name. So if you go back to the driver, just as a reminder, we see that the symbolic link name is process power. This is the one under these two question marks directory. So now I can go ahead and use that string. And I'm going to use the generic write here and generic read perhaps. Doesn't uh, matter much for the purposes of this particular driver. Share mode, I don't really care. Exclusive is fine by me. Then we have some security attributes which we don't care uh, at all because we're opening an existing device. And so open existing in fact is mandatory here because we're opening a handle to an existing device. In fact, we can't do it uh, in any other way. So open existing and then some flags which we don't need and template file which is uh, also not needed in such cases. And so if I go ahead and check that 
return value. So let's see if that returns invalid handle value. If it does, then it means something is wrong. And so we have an error opening a device. Let me just uh, display the, the error itself, the error number, by calling the get last error function. And let me return one here. If I got to this point that everything is fine, I have a proper handle uh, to the device, at this point I can't really do much except for closing the handle because we don't have the main functionality of the driver uh, just yet. So let's just close uh, the device handle. And so now let's test that. Let me uh, make that uh, project the startup project. Let me build to make sure everything uh, compiles fine. And let's run that at this point. So I've placed a breakpoint just before create file. We're going to uh, hit that breakpoint uh, very soon. So here we're hitting the breakpoint. And uh, let's look at what happens after I press F10 to step over the create file line. And so what we see here is that we get uh, minus one or invalid handle value in the H device parameter. And so apparently we weren't able to open a proper handle uh, to the device. If we want to understand why we need to look at what get last error returns, we can do that uh, more uh, simply with a debugger, regardless of get last error, by using the sudo variable at ERR. You can see the error value is two. And if you go to the error lookup tool that you may be familiar with in Visual Studio and look at the value two, you'll see that it means the system cannot find the file specified, which really means here that this symbolic link doesn't exist. And that actually makes sense because my driver wasn't uh, started, it wasn't loaded. Let me now start the proc power driver again. So now it's running. So let's try this again. If you go ahead and press F10, now we get proper handle. The handle number is 58. And if I want, I can even look at a tool such as Process Explorer and see what information we can glean from this particular handle value within that process. And of course, we can go ahead and open WinOBJ as we did previously in the previous module and see the symbolic link and everything else that we expect here. So here our application is called test. Let's go to test and let's look at handles. And notice that handle 58, exactly the value that we got here uh, from create file, points to our internal device object. So everything seems to be working fine. And we can now go ahead and continue working on the real functionality of this driver. Mm -hmm.